Okay, guys. I'm going to make another little video here. A little repair video. Let me pull up my chair. And uh, show you guys something I ran into today. That I'm sure you'll run into sooner or later. If you have an FX Impact rifle. Uh, this morning, my friend Angel brought me his little compact rifle. This is a 30 cal MK2 with the complaint that it had a air leak, but that it had a peculiar air leak that the air would all leak out down to about 90 bar and stop leaking. But when he hooked up the air tank to it to try to fill it up with air, it would all just come gushing out in this area over here. And so, well, that's right by the nose of the plenum. And so this is a problem I've encountered in the past and I knew immediately what the problem is. The problem is that inside the nose of the plenum, you have two little O-rings. One of them makes a seal on the valve rod and the other little black O-ring uh, holds the first one in place. And so what happens over time is that as that valve rod moves forwards and backwards um, in there, it abrades the inside diameter of the O-ring is supposed to seal it just enough that so under low pressure it will seal, but under higher pressures it won't. It's very strange, but uh, eventually you'll see it. And so I cured the problem by putting a brand new O-ring. Uh, and I'm going to show you what kind and why. Um, in the past, I would buy O-rings from FX USA. Uh, the size is 2.84 by 2.62. And here are some used ones. And there's also a few new ones in the bag. And these things were aggravating as hell because sometimes you would put a brand new one in the nose of a plenum. And whether it's the Power Plenum or the Power Plenum 720, they both take the same O-ring. And sometimes the O-ring would seal and sometimes it wouldn't. And you'd have to take the gun all apart and throw that one away and try a different one and keep trying them and keep trying them. And there was one time where I tried like 10 of them until I finally found one that would seal. So the sizes are not perfectly uniform. Uh... Which is just, like I say, aggravating as hell. So, I have a uh, very good friend named Joe that is a really smart guy. Let me set these junkers aside. And my friend Joe, who's a, amongst other things, does a little, has a little machinist uh, skills. When I complained about this problem to him one night in a conversation, my friend Joe Hefner told me that uh, he had run into the same problem and that he solved it by using these instead. He buys these from the O-ring store, so I bought me some. And instead of uh, 2.84 by 2.62, the Inside diameter of these is one eighth, and the outside diameter is five sixteenths, with a cross section uh, thickness of three thirty seconds. Okay, these work perfect, first time, every time, never a problem. Okay, these uh, the the, the uh, valve rod slides through this. When you put it in the nose of the plenum, the valve rod slides through this o -ring, these O-rings like nice and tight. Not too tight, but just perfectly tight. And you'll never, ever have a, a hiccup or a problem. 
And they last like, I don't know, a long, long time. I've never worn one of these out. Uh, I imagine it eventually in, after enough years go by, they might get dried out and hard and need replaced. But so far, it hasn't been the case with me. Okay. So these are the ones I strongly recommend you use. Because I had so much problem with these ones that I got from FX USA at several dollars a piece, for Christ's sakes, um, I went to the O-Rings and More store, where I normally get my O-Rings, and I tried some of these 2.84 by 2.62 silicone. No good. The 2.84 by 2.62 Buna 70. Black rubber. No good. Same thing, Buna 90. No good. So these are all junk. Uh, <laughs> by the way, also, let's see, there's uh, 50 O-rings in each of these bags. Uh, I think that was 50 cents or a dollar for each bag at the uh, O-rings and more store. So, if you're going to buy O-rings for your rifle, I recommend uh, the O-ring store or O-rings and more. All right. So, these I'm just keeping for God knows what situation I may run into someday. I can use these for. I don't know. Uh, they are nice, what I call little chubbies. Little fat chubby O-rings, you know? So, well, today I did find a use for them. Uh, while I was fixing this problem, let me just set these aside. You see, I put a little note in the bag with this uh, to remind myself that these replace the FX 284 by 262 millimeters. All right. Now, I run into a secondary problem, and that's that uh, Angel tells me he got this set up with this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, some kind of little hornet, <laughs> bumblebee, I don't know, some kind, some kind of little bullshit air tube, uh, and silencer set up from uh, Huma. Uh, this is, I guess, ultra compact, you know, way to make your rifle small, whatever. I'm not personally a big fan of it, as you can probably tell, because you're not going to get many shots. Me, I'd rather go with a 480cc bottle, or as a minimum, a 300cc bottle, rather than this little tiny thing. Anyway, the problem I ran into and I also had to fix is to accommodate this little air bottle here, air tube, I should call it. I guess this is from Huma. Uh, well, this is your valve spring adjustment nut. All right, now, in the old MK2, that looked like this. Without the white mark, of course, that's my doing. Uh, and inside, let's see if I can get you to look inside. All right, there we go. Inside, it originally just had like a thick rubber ball. And then eventually, FX came out with this larger valve spring adjustment knob uh, for the M3. Uh, and it has this like pin inside and that pin is what your C1 hammer stop bangs up against. When you pull the trigger, the hammer flies forward and the tip of the C1 compresses your valve return spring and the tip of your C1 bangs up against that pin. And it pushes that pin rearwards. And inside here, if you take that Allen screw out 
and look inside here. Behind that pin is two little rubber balls, a large fat one and a small one, a small rubber one. And they cushion the impact. Well, this one, the problem comes in where with this version from Huma, when you screw, instead of screwing on and going over the outside of this, you can see there isn't enough clearance here for one of these type. Okay, or one of these type. So they came up with this, which would be fine, except that they didn't put any rubber a ball or some kind of pin assembly inside here. And the problem arises because from the fact that you can screw this all the way in until it bottoms out. So this part here bottoms out against this housing right there. And this will bottom out against that long before the uh, valve pin seats itself all the way into the valve house. And I'll see if I can show you what that looks like. Okay. You can see the tip of the valve rod is now seated all the way into the valve house here. Okay. I'll touch that with my little finger so you see what I'm talking about. All right. Well, before... I made it, uh, adapted this thing and improved it. That tip of that pin was like a good one and a half millimeters inside. I mean, further in, so that the little tiny O ring on the tip of the valve rod, which is a 2.2 by one millimeter, is just barely in that hole in the valve house. So that it's going to blow off real easy. Secondly, it's going to allow air to blow by and into the magazine well here, where the magazine goes. And, you know, that's very uncomfortable when you pull the trigger and you hear this loud bang in your ear and a slap of uh, compressed air on the side of your face. So that sucks. So what I did to solve the problem is I took two of these little chubby O-rings, Duro 90, which is soft enough to cushion the blow of the C1. Here, let me just jack this up a little. They're soft enough to cushion the blow of the C1, and yet uh, uh, strong enough and durable enough to take the punishment of uh, that tip of that C1 beating, you know, beating them against it every time you pull the trigger. So now you can screw this in with two of these little chubby O-rings inside the tip of this, filling up that gap like, like that gap here on this one. The two little chubbies just filled that right up. Oh, uh, and left it just shy, about a couple of millimeters shy of the tip. So that this will now screw on and just a couple threads before it bottoms out against here. Uh, it'll close your valve pin all the way. Okay. Uh, some of you may be curious about the white mark you see on some of these. Uh, that's a habit of mine. Anytime you see a white mark like that on one of these valve spring adjustment nuts, it was probably a rifle tuned by me. Uh, that's white out. The purpose of that is uh, when I begin tuning, uh, working on a rifle and, and I'm going to begin tuning it, I turn this all the way in to where it completely stops. The valve rod all the way in. And I can't turn this in anymore. I make a little dot here at the 3 o'clock position. Assuming the top would be 12, this would be 3. And then I turn it 5 complete turns out this way. And that's my starting point for tuning. Sometimes I'll turn it back in a half turn or a full turn in or another half or full turn out. 
one way or the other, depending on how I want to set up the uh, tune for a particular rifle, for max power or max accuracy or somewhere in between, for pellets or slugs, etc. I'll get into uh, some advice and pointers on adjusting this and uh, your macro and micro adjustment on the other side of the rifle someday. But for now, should you run into a problem where all the air is leaking out of the nose of your plenum, um, I recommend you replace it. That O-ring with these, like I say, from the O-ring store, a 1 8 by 5 16 by 3 32nd. All right? And if you have one of these setups, I would unscrew that valve spring adjustment knob and put a couple of chubby O-rings in there to two reasons. To cushion the impact of that uh, C1 coming forward and to also prevent over-travel because if that valve rod comes too far forward off the valve seat back here, it might not return exactly back into the valve seat and seal it. It'll get cockeyed and you'll pull the trigger and bang, you'll fire a shot and all of a sudden you hear all the air gushing out of the rifle back here because the valve is off the seat and won't go back on. Sometimes you can quickly fix that. If you're quick enough, you can just cock the gun uh, and maybe that'll cure it. You're not going to, you're never going to be quick enough to screw that all the way in to, to seat it and stop the air all flowing out of your air bottle on the gun. Uh, you just, you're just not going to be able to be fast enough to do that. So another big factor is the over travel of your valve rod coming too far forward with nothing to stop it or, or keep it from going too far. Uh, and it comes completely off the valve seat and then gets, like I say, cockeyed. It won't seat itself and uh, all the air gushes out. And that's a real drag when that happens. So that's a way to fix two problems that you may run into someday. All right. Till next time.